Morning, boys and girls. Why do I have binoculars? Does it kind of make me look like a, a spy? Now, we'll get into that in just a few minutes when we start studying our lesson. Let's open up in prayer. So close your eyes. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to die on the cross for our sins. Father, I pray for the boys and girls as we study this lesson that you would teach us, that your spirit would lead us and guide us and teach us. And I pray that they would desire to follow the one true God, the God who created all things and the God who is Lord of all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, my first question, what book is this? It's the Bible. Did you know that this is the most important book in the world? Why? Why is it the most important book in the world? Because it is God's word. God never lies. God never makes a mistake. And because of that, we can trust him. We can trust his word. Well, we go to the book of Joshua today. Joshua chapter 2. We're going to kind of finish up with chapter 1 going into verse, uh, into chapter 2. Chapter 1 going into chapter 2. So we see at the beginning or at the end of chapter 1 in the beginning of chapter 2, we see that Joshua is the leader of Israel. God is the creator of all the earth. And God chooses who he wants to have land. And so he gave this, this beautiful land to Israel. And so Joshua was the leader of Israel. He would be the one who would help the children of Israel fight their way to, to take the land of Canaan that God gave them. God gave Israel, the nation of Israel, the land to Israel. But before it was called Israel, it was known as the land of Canaan. So uh, Joshua, at the end of chapter 1, is um, it, God is telling him, it is time for you to go and to take the promised land. The promised land. The land that God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Joshua would, would, would take the land of Israel with a great army, the army of Israel. And so that's pretty much the end of chapter 1, but the beginning of chapter 2, we see that Joshua sends two spies, two spies to spy out the land of Israel. Why? Why would they have to spy out the land of Israel? Well, because Joshua needed them to go and to see this land, specifically the, the city of Jericho. Go and search out this city and bring back a report to me. Let me know how big it is. Let me know if there's a great army, a strong army. Let me know so that we can prepare to take the city that God has given us. And so the two men... The two spies went into the city of Jericho. Well, in verse 2, it says that in verse 1, they came to a house of a, of a woman that was, she was of the city, a woman of the city. She was known to everybody of the city. She did not have a good reputation. She was not a very clean woman. But they went to her house. And she did something amazing. She hid the spies. Who did she hide them from? She hid them from the king of Jericho, from this city that Joshua was going to go take. So the two spies went into uh, Rahab's house. That's the name of the woman. Her, her name was Rahab. They went into her home. And uh, chapter 2, verse 2, it says, It was told the king of Jericho, Behold, men from Israel have come here, and they have come out to search out the land. They, they, they're spies, king. They're spies, and they've come to search out our land. 
And so the king of Jericho sent word to Rahab, and he said, Bring out those men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out our land. But Rahab did not do that. <laughs> she hid the spies in her home. She hid them under uh, stalks of flax, a type of uh, grass, I guess, and, and uh, was sort of made, uh, used to make baskets. So she hid them, and and she said, she said to the king, the king's servant more than likely came to her, and she said, well, of course the men came to me. You know, she was a woman of the city. Of course, people come to her. But I don't know where they came from. I didn't know anything. At dusk, it was time to close the city gate. So the men left. I don't know where they went. I don't know which way. But go after them quickly. You may overtake them. And then it says that the king's men, they went after them. They went in pursuit of them. And then when they went to find them, the gates shut. And then in verse 8, it, we see that before um, the men left, before they, they lay down even, that Rahab um, came up to them on her roof. And she said to the two men of Israel, the spies, I know. Rahab said, I know that the Lord has given you our land and that the terror of you has fallen on us and all the inhabitants of the land have, have melted away. Their hearts are scared. They are so fearful because of what we have heard your great God has done for you. Now, what has God done for them? God had dried up the Red Sea and he had drowned the whole Egyptian army. He had killed uh, several, had killed some kings before they came into the land of Canaan. And so Rahab said, we know what your God has done. And so all of our, our men in this city, the, the people that live in Jericho, they're frightened. They're very fearful. But Rahab said, please remember me. Remember me when you come in to fight, to take this land. Remember the, what I've done, that I have helped you, that I have hidden you from the king of Jericho, from the king's servants. I've hidden you. And please show kindness to me when you come to take our city and to my family. And so um, Joshua, or it's chapter 2, verse 14 it says, so the man said to her, our life for your life, if you don't tell our secret, if you do not tell this business of ours. So it shall come about when the Lord gives us this land that we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. Then in verse 15, it says that Rahab let the men down, let the spies down by a rope through the window. For her house was on the city wall. See this? Her house was built right along the edge of the city wall. There we go. And so she let them down outside the city wall, outside the gate of the city, in order for them to be protected. So they escaped. They were able to get back to uh, Joshua and to tell him what the news was of this, the city of Jericho. So they had told her, when we come in to destroy the city, if you will let down this red rope, and if you will leave it outside of the window, then no one in your home who is in your home at the time that we come to destroy the city will be harmed. You will be saved, and all your household will be saved. So, and so then the two spies went back to Joshua, and they told him, Every, all the report, they told them uh, about the, the city of Jericho, and they also told him about Rahab, of how kind she had dealt with them, and how she had hid them from the king's men. And so they had told her to let a rope, a red rope, down the, lay it, uh, or keep it out the window, so that when they come to take the city, that she would be saved. Well, we will pick up with this lesson next week. But it's so exciting.
Because remember last week our lesson was on a lady named Ruth? And Ruth and Rahab both Gentiles, not Israelites, not from the children of Israel, not from Abraham, but they were Gentiles. But they, they believed in the one true God, and they wanted to follow him. And so, amazing, amazing, they are part of the family of Jesus. So, hope you liked this lesson. And remember, the red rope that, they, that she hung out the window for when the, uh, the army of Israel will come. So we'll pick that back up next week and see what happens to Rahab, okay? So your lesson, your craft this week that you should have gotten in the mail was very simple. It was already colored and it was already cut out. So if you just put um, the piece of paper that has the spy that's uh, shimmying down from, from the red rope from Rahab's home, like that, you can make sure that he gets down to the very bottom there with his other spy friend, okay? All right, guys, love you, and I hope you have a great week. See you soon. Bye-bye.